This is our second noon hour gathering in the season of Lent. I remind you once again that this is a season for self-examination. A time to once again take measure of ourselves in comparison to the faithfulness of Jesus of Nazareth. It's an opportunity that we have to recognize our own limitations of what we could be. This is a time for us to prepare to participate in the holy, all the events of Holy Week leading us to that empty tomb experience. So come, let us worship God who calls us to the heart of the matter. Again, let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, as Jesus knew a sense of your presence, even when he again wandered in that wilderness, seeking the course that his ministry should take, we find ourselves in a similar path, wondering, what is it you want from us? And so we go about discovering, even sometimes when that, that discovery is painful, when we look deep within ourselves, touch us with your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, so that we can be strengthened, so that we can have what it is that we need to resist the temptations in our struggle to identify and to follow your will for us. So may our worship reveal to us new dimensions of ourselves, and of our relationship with you. And this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture reading today is one that I think is very familiar to all of you. It's taken from the book of Genesis. That's the ninth chapter. I'm going to read verse 1 and then verses 8 through 17 from the New Revised Standard Version. And it's all about God's covenant with Noah. Hear now the word of God. God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals and every animal on the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I have made between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The meditation is simply entitled Thorns and Rainbows. One of the best known stories in all literature is the story of Noah and the ark. God made a promise to Noah and to all humankind, never again would God send a flood to destroy the earth. And this would be a sign of God's promise. God placed a rainbow in the clouds. And whenever we see the rainbow, we can remember God's promise. There's something special 
something hopeful about a rainbow, isn't there? Here are some things about rainbows you may not know. Rainbows appear at the end of rainstorms because they have two prerequisites for making them. Number one, water droplets suspended in the sky. And number two, the sunlight. Now listen, rainbows are actually circular. They appear to be arches only because their bottom halves are cut off by the ground that you and I are standing on. If you wish to see them in full circular glory, you need to view them from high above the earth, maybe as in an aeroplane. The rainbow has no beginning and no end. Those are the technical truths about rainbows, but they do not explain the emotional lift that we get from these wonders of nature. They lift our spirits. Rainbows follow storms. And no matter how fierce the storm may be, if we see a rainbow afterward, it gives us hope. Look, our lives are not all sunny days and swaying palm trees and leisurely sipping iced tea. We all have times when life beats us up. Circumstances are overwhelming or when we have lost focus and we can't find our way forward and we can't find our way back home. I call those the thorny times in life's journey. A lot of us have great difficulty being thankful for the thorns in our lives. Now maybe I'm a little out to lunch here, but I think that the thorns on a rose stem actually make the rose more precious. Those thorns draw our attention to them, and so we handle the stem more carefully, and so we enjoy the beauty of the rose more fully. I think we treasure God's providential, compassionate care more during troubling times than at any other time. Remember, it was a crown of thorns that Jesus wore so that you and I might know his love. Don't resent the thorns in your life. We all have them. What we need to do is to allow God to heal our hearts. Rainbows follow storms. But here is what is most important of all. Rainbows remind us of the covenant relationship we have with God. God made a promise to Noah and sealed it with a rainbow. God also made a promise to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. In fact, God made lots of promises in the scriptures over 3,000 promises. You see, promises are important to God, just as they are important to us. On my honor, I promise to do my duty to God and the Queen. Some of you will remember that. I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Some of you will remember that. To have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death parts us. And some of you will remember that. Promises are important. But a promise is only as good as the character of the one making it. The one who has made over 3,000 promises to us in the scripture has impeccable character. If God says that he will be with us through the storm, you can count on it. If God says he accepts us as we are, you can take that to the bank. 
If God says he has prepared a place for us that where he is there we may be also, you can look forward to it. If God says that nothing in all creation can separate us from his love for us in Christ, then you can relax because that is true. Remember, the next time you see a rainbow, that not simply God promised to Noah that he would never again destroy the world with water, but all the promises God makes to us through the scriptures are sealed in that rainbow. After the storm, a rainbow. And rainbows remind us of the beauty of God's promises day by day. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we may never have thanked you for our thorns. We have thanked you a thousand times for the roses, but never once for the thorns. Teach us the glory of the cross we bear. Teach us the value of our thorns. Show us that we have climbed closer to you along the path of pain. Show us that through our tears, the colors of your rainbow look much more brilliant for you, O oh God, are at the heart of the matter. Through Christ all man. And now, may the Holy Spirit of God grant to each of you a glorious inner strength that with our feet planted firmly on the love of Christ, we may reach out and experience the breadth, length, depth, and height of Christ's love. And may each of us live full lives, full in the goodness of God, our Creator. Amen.